Hi, this is Ranger Mara. Welcome to our third installment of our watercolor workshop with Betty Gatewood. Um, today we're going to be putting into practice what you've learned in the previous episodes and you'll have a chance to, to practice your artwork. Okay, so just some practice time. And at this point, I'm going to work with watercolor and I'm going to show you more about the blending thing. And so these are just, we're going to practice let's just say this is like um, the middle of a flower or how about a nut or uh, a berry or something and then this is the stem. I'm going to show you how that you can make it look like that there is some depth to it. So we're going to tell, oh, let's go for a bright color. Mm, maybe even a little bit less orange. Let's put a little bit of that in there. And so if the light, remember, is coming from this direction, you want to have your darkest color on this side. And so we're going to just kind of do that. And then you've seen berries and what have you that the light's coming that way. And that side is almost white. So what you can do is you can pull the color out so that it looks like it has some depth to it, almost a shadow. And you can just kind of keep playing. I would suggest that you you'd practice this before you actually go into your painting. So you know you can try that with another color. So the blue or the purple, let's just go for it. Let's just do something really dark. And you can so you can use this technique on the parts of your leaf, the parts of your flower. And of course, I'm going to show you too how to use it on the stem. Not exactly where I want that to end up. But whose painting is this? It's mine. And so the light, maybe it's being, I don't know, anyway. You kind of get the, the idea of that. Oh my, I have red and blue. What are the colors do I need now of a primary? Let's do a yellow. And the yellow, of course, is so transparent that we're going to add just a tiny bit of orange to it over here. So now what I'm doing is I'm working with something called wet into wet. So the paper was still wet, and the paint I'm putting on it is wet. And then I can kind of backstroke it a little bit. Now if we have a stem, and I'm going to, the best way to make a, a stem a gray is to mix your colors of a blue and a brown. Ugh, I don't like that. So we're going to add a little bit more of this because I don't want to, that's more of a purple. Or just kind of do that. Okay, so here's the stem and I'm going to take my bigger brush and make a very light. Now this is the stem, of, let's say of a tree. I could do one that was of a, a plant. And so, whoops, I went outside the lines, that's okay. And a bit of that. And now I want something a little bit less water and more paint. So I'm going to put it down here. And one of the tricks that you can use, if you can do it, is even to tilt your paper when you're working wet onto wet, tilt your paper, and then it will, by gravity, roll down a little bit. So let's just say that the light for this, this uh, tree, tree stem is coming from, from this way. And so this will be the darkest. And so I need to kind of modify this just a little bit and make it look like it's not quite painted on there. Make it look like it's natural. And if I don't like that, then I can come back and even add a little bit darker. So we're talking about 
a woody stem here. And if that woody stem then, you know, they're not all straight, they might even have little parts that are on there like so, and, and even Maybe even, maybe it has some insect damage. I put things on there, as my husband says, I paint it like it looks, and that's okay. Okay, so that's showing you how you can do shadows and have, and of course now you can go back and do it again. Now you can do another layer, pull it out, so it is a time-consuming thing, but I don't think of it as time-consuming. I think it as my time that I'm doing, and um, I get great pleasure from it. Sometimes I get frustrated. That's part of the whole process. I'm going to show you one more thing before we go back to our bluet. One. Anyway, you can see that the tulip is not all the same color. So we're going to try to imitate this, underlying all this. You always start with a light color. In this case, I start with yellow. So this is, I, I painted this last night. So this is dry uh, yellow paint. And now you want to make sure that you have clean water um, for starting that, especially since you're on yellow. I'm going to use a very small brush. And I want to do some of the... Uh, oranginess in there. So I'm going to go for orange and see if I'm going to roll the brush in the paint. And, um, and then I'm going to try to go for the darkest. Well, you can see that the very center of that, which is down here, is yellow. So I can't paint that. I'm going to go up in here. Instead. And this is the scary part, but it's so so my dry brush, I'm doing not much water. So they call this dry brush, but it's because I don't have much water on there. And what you do first is um, just a wash layer. I gotta remember how to say the word W-A-S-H. I'm from Missouri, and I say wash, sorry. And then you can uh, change that a little bit. After this dries, you can come back and add some more. And especially, you can come back, and I'm going to show you this on here, is you can really get some detail. If you do dry on wet, you can really get those details. And that's what the little tiny brushes are for. Okay, so yeah, that would be just probably uh, the very first part of that flower petal. And of course, later on, I would do it much darker down here, which brings up the next thing I want to show you, which is if this was dry on dry, I want to show you what happens if you have a wet surface and I'm just going to blob it in and then put relatively dry paint on it. i make it about the same color. And I want you to see what happens here. Whoops. So once again, I got to have, whoops, I should have put the yellow on there. So I'm going to do the yellow down at the bottom. So I'm doing not much paint. There, but the surface is wet. And now I want to do the, not a whole lot of water. And I'll dab my brush when I need to. And then I can do this. And you can see how that the color almost, well, it kind of paints itself, sort of, kind of. So that effect might be what you you're looking for. Now, whenever you paint with watercolor, what you end up with is a so much lighter 
than what you think. So we're going to let that dry. And then um, I want to show you the last thing, and we'll go back and look at our, our bluet. Uh, so I'm going to wet this again. So this is going to be a lots of wet paint on wet paper. And you can see it kind of blossoms itself, sort of. So you got to just play around with some of your supplies and see what you want on different parts of the flower might determine what you want. I brought this painting out. Yes, I love skunk cabbage. But um, that another, another way of doing your botanical is to put it in a habitat. And so this, it melted the snow. And here I have a little bit of, of um, marsh, mud, muck. And yeah, I'm a mess after I go back in and look at these plants. Sometimes you might want to do a background and not just where it's growing. This is a result of seeing a bunch of leaves in the water on Madison Run, uh, which is in Shenandoah. And I had the leaves and I did some wet on wet here. And then I went back with an ink and then I found um, an acorn that had sprouted, but obviously didn't have much success because it's in the fall, and all these little rootlets. And that tells a story. Here's the acorn cap that used to be there, and it popped off. Anyway, so you can arrange things and then do a background. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for future episodes of our watercolor workshop. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get notifications when there will be more episodes in the series on our Shenandoah National Park Spring Wildflower Celebration.